Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple. That's your no shit gaming news video. Three news stories in one video with zero faff. Pirates are cool. Sailing the high seas and battling rival ships is always exciting. So why are there so few good pirate games these days? Assassin's Creed Black Flag scratched that itch nicely and Sea of Thieves offered a multiplayer experience, but since then the waters have been pretty quiet. Skull and Bones was meant to be that game, but has been delayed yet again to outside of this fiscal year. This comes from the latest earnings report from Ubisoft, which describes yet another record-breaking year for the company and points to what's coming in the future. Skull and Bones was meant to be the ultimate pirate fantasy, albeit within a live service framework, and was shown off at E3 2017 when it was expected to launch in autumn of 2018. Clearly that never happened, and the game was officially delayed in May 2018 with no date given. At E3 2018 we got a little gameplay which showed some potential, but the future of the project was still in the wind. Then almost exactly a year on from the first delay, it was delayed again to an undetermined date. Though is it technically a delay if it was never given a revised release date? The belief at the time was that the game would ship somewhere in the next 2020 financial year, but again, evidently that never happened. Following that, there was another update, which was essentially another unspoken delay to an unspoken date, and that the game would not be shown off at Ubisoft's event UB Forward. Even with all these delays and updates, the game still pops up in Ubisoft's internal reports as something coming in the future. In the most recent earnings call for the past 12 months, Ubisoft said that the game will now release in the 2022-2023 fiscal year, so it's meant to be coming sometime between next April. April and the following March. After all these years lost at sea, there is still no real indication of when the game will come or what it even looks like anymore. Supposedly there is a Skull and Bones TV show in the works, but who knows if that will ever even reach the surface. The other most notable talking point from this earnings report is the move into free-to-play gaming. Ubisoft is probably the most stereotypical AAA game company out there since all its games are virtually identical and have a bunch of unnecessary microtransactions. As such, moving into free-to-play shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. In the call they said the company is building high-end free-to-play games to be trending towards AAA ambitions over the long term. This move into free-to-play will be happening with existing franchises, with Ubisoft's biggest being Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, and everything Tom Clancy. However, these free-to-play experiences are supposedly not going to replace the company's traditional premium experiences, but will instead run alongside them. Ubisoft senior analyst Sean Lama clarified this by responding to a tweet made by Jeff Keighley. Regarding the Ubisoft comments, it's in reference to free-to-play becoming a larger share of the revenue pie, not an indication that there will be less traditional paid games like Assassin's Creed. The content mix is expanding, not changing. A good comparison is the evolution of COD since Warzone. One such free-to-play experience Ubisoft is working on is called Heartland, which is set within the Division universe. This is in development at Red Storm Entertainment, the home of Ghost Recon, and launches sometime between 2021 and 2022 for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Getting just as many AAA premium Ubisoft games as before in addition to these free-to-play experiences seems very unlikely, but to me that's no bad thing. Ubisoft has long faced criticism for all its games playing the same or having the same mechanics, which was made worse by how it oversaturated its own market. Fewer, but higher quality games from Ubisoft is something that I would certainly appreciate. There is also a chance that with the abundance of free-to-play monetization that is to come, we may see less of it in the AAA premium experiences, but I'm not naive enough to believe that for a second. And next up, everyone loves a bit of GTA, and that's largely because of the legacy that was forged by GTA 3. Rockstar set the standard for what an open world game should be with that title way back in 2001. One. As with any game, particularly one that old, modders love to get their hands on it and see how it all really works. In February, one group of developers released the product of years of work to GitHub in the form of two fully reverse engineered versions of GTA 3 and GTA Vice City, known as RE3 and REVC. These versions would enable players to control every aspect of the game as if they were the original developers themselves and have full access to all its inner workings. Bugs have been fixed, debug modes were added compatibility with new controllers, no loading screens between islands, widescreen support with scale HUD, menus, and FOV are just some of the features of the reverse engineered versions. That sounds wonderful for the modding community, but unsurprisingly, Take Two, the owner of GTA, wasn't happy about having its product be used like that, so fired off a bunch of DMCA takedowns on GitHub. Take Two said, The content in the leaks below consists of copyrighted materials owned by Take Two. The use of our copyrighted content in these links are unauthorized and it should be removed immediately. Now, this sort of thing can be a little tricky since reverse engineering can be viewed as fair use, but 
it's not always clean cut and any sort of legal process would prove costly for all parties involved. Take Two's Take Down didn't just remove the original repository, but more than 200 forks based on it, which are basically copies of the original upload. However, one guy took a stand. One lone New Zealander known as Theo was one of these forks owners and fought back against Take Two, arguing that the takedown shouldn't have happened since Take Two doesn't own the new code. They filed a counter notice arguing that the DMCA strike was false since Take Two is not the owner of this code. The developer told Torrent Freak it would appear that the code in the RE3 repo is reverse engineered, not a straight decompilation. I believe Take Two's claim to be wholly incorrect if this is the case, since the code may be functionally identical, but not exactly identical, they hold no claim to the code. It's a subtle technical difference, but seems to have been enough to get around the legal situation for now, as GitHub restored the removed fork, meaning that people can access this reverse engineered code once again. I've titled this section Modders Win Against Take Two, but that's not really the full story and it's not a total victory yet. This is just GitHub reinstating the content it had once removed. Take Two could still take these guys to court if it wanted to. For now at least, if you want to play around with the internal workings of GTA 3 or Vice City, you can. Personally, I see zero harm in any of this. Take Two isn't getting hurt, no one is really buying GTA 3 or Vice City anymore anyway, so why not just let it be? I would throw up a clip of Paul McCartney singing there, but the music industry is even more aggressive with copyright claims than gaming is, so I'm just gonna leave things there. And finally, from Ubisoft to Take Two to Nintendo, we seem to be running with questionable gaming companies in today's episode. Unlike the others, Nintendo has a cuddly, kid-friendly brand that seems to give them a free pass when it comes to the amount of bullshit they often pull. This latest one doesn't even make me mad though, it's just hilarious. From today, you'll be able to get a calculator on your Nintendo Switch. Literally just a screen with buttons to do some sums. It's safe to assume that, since you're actually watching this video, you already have a calculator, probably on the device you're watching on like your phone or computer. Those devices come with it built in and pre-installed, plain and simple. However, Nintendo sees fit to charge $10 for its calculator app. That's $10 for something you most likely already own or can access completely for free by literally typing the word calculator into Google. Who is playing their Switch and desperately needs to do some maths right then and there and doesn't already have one on their phone or even a physical one around the house? I remember years ago getting my first phone when I was a kid and my nan's mind was totally blown by the fact that I had a calculator on it and it was completely free. Like I said, I'm not even mad, it's not even that controversial, this is just so, so funny. The only things I have left to say are, I'll leave you with this takeaway, something doesn't add up, this will divide the fan base, and it's a sad sign of the times. And that's it for today, if you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost, hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments, toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. I've been Henry Cooper, that's all for today, bye for now.